The Lord be with you. And also with you. We gather together in the sanctuary and those at home welcome everyone to our worship service where we worship God together. Our call to worship is on the screen or in Voices United. Our help is in the name of God. Let us give thanks to our sovereign God. Who is worthy of all our and prayers. Let us pray. O oh God, you spoke your word and revealed your good news in Jesus the Christ. Fill all creation with that word again, so that proclaiming your joyful promises to all nations and singing of your glorious hope to all peoples, we may become one living body, your incarnate presence on the earth. Amen. Let us sing. Will you come and see the light and voices united number 96 or it is on the screen. Feel free to greet one another in Christ's name, wave, smile. <laughs> Those of us who had hymn books, we had the... <laughs> no, no, not your fault, no. You have to go by what's, <laughs> what's a given. I'm panicking now. No. <laughs> That's the fun. It's creative. It's whatever happens, we have fun with the Lord. And as we're in the Lord's presence, we're aware of our 
sins and our failures. And so we offer our prayer of confession, which is on the screen or in Voices United 928 at the bottom. Let us pray. Gracious God, as people call to be your presence in the world, we search our hearts and ask your forgiveness for opportunities not taken, for care not given. Forgive us, we pray. For sorrow not shared, for joy not celebrated. Forgive us, we pray. For love not offered, forgiveness not extended. <coughs> For those failings we cannot speak aloud. <coughs> Gracious God, we seek your healing grace and ask forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Christ, God says to us, arise, shine, for your light has come. In Christ, God says to us, love one another as I have loved you. In Christ, God says to us, your sins are forgiven you. Thanks be to God who loves us and who forgives us. And in celebration of God's forgiving love and a chance to begin again, we sing the Gloria twice. Now we'll have the young and heart moment. And this uh, Sunday we're taking a different change. It's entitled Jesus Loves the Little Children, but it is from The Chosen. This is a series, I haven't been watching it, but it's been on and I've seen bits and pieces of it. And it's quite interesting on uh, the life of Jesus and biblical times. And it reminds us Jesus isn't a, a cartoon character. Jesus lived and he lives with us now but he was a full human being and so this gives you a glimpse of, of Jesus and there's been a lot of movies around where they you have a Jesus if sometimes the uh, movie portrayal of Jesus is like he's a space cadet or and had some uh, extra medicine and he just sort of goes around with a heavenly glow and and eyes and blue, you know, blue eyes and a glow always around his head, and or there'll there'll be some of you may have liked it. I didn't care for it in the Passion of the Christ. Uh, that was, to my way of thinking, horrible. I wouldn't let my mother watch it uh, because it, I'm going that is you know horrible. And uh, but there's been varieties of of presentations of Jesus, so. Here we have Jesus Loves the Little Children from the series The Chosen. Then following that, the choir will have Bring Forth the Kingdom. And then we will have Bev reading our scripture readings for this morning. And now we'll have our Young at Heart moment.
Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who gives forth bread from this earth. And I pray that if there are ever two children who come visit my home here, you will give them the courage Stay. to say shalom. No. So that they will know they do not have to remain in hiding. He's a good man. Stay. Amen. Stay. We are going to stay. Ah! <laughs> What's that sound I hear? Sheep don't sound like that. <laughs> no, that's definitely not sheep. Maybe a rooster? Greetings, children. You know, it is not safe for a child to wander from their home. You never know if there are bad men around. You are wise to bring your friend this time. Joshua. Shalom, Joshua. I admire your bravery to come here. You are a good friend. Oh, well, don't worry. I'm not a bad man. See, I know it. You are free to stay for a bit, but I'm afraid I have some work to do. Okay. And thank you for not taking any food yesterday. See, I know it. So, what are you doing here? I'm visiting for a time. Where are you from? Nazareth. What is that hood for? I'm building something. Are you a carpenter? Sometimes, but I'm a craftsman. I build all kinds of things. So, why don't you live in the house? I travel a lot. How do you make money? Just asking him how he makes money. I know, you shouldn't. It's okay. I don't make money when I travel. So for now, I build things and trade them for my food and clothing. What is that? Ah, this is going to be a lock and key. Joshua, ask him questions. He's nice. No, thank you. What else will you build? Wealthy people love decorations and toys for their children. But my family isn't wealthy. Many times that's better. I don't know about that. <laughs> you will. My mom made me this. Oh, what's her name? Sarah. Very pretty. Okay, time to go home. Bye.
morning. Good morning. Prayer uh, for illumination. Let us pray. O oh God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear what you are saying to us today. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, reading verses 1 to 9. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. Shout, a full-throated shout. Hold back nothing, a trumpet blast shout. Tell my people what's wrong with their lives. Face my family Jacob with their sins. They're busy, busy, busy at worship and love studying all about me. To all appearances, they're a nation of right living people, law abiding, God honoring. They ask me what's the right thing to do and love having me on their side. But they also complain. Why do we fast and you don't look our way. Why do we humble ourselves and you don't even notice? Well, here's why. The bottom line on your fast days is profit. You drive your employees much too hard. You fast, but at the same time you bicker and fight. You fast, but you swing a mean fist. The kind of fasting you do won't get your prayers off the ground. Do you think this is the kind of fast day I'm after? A day to show off humility? To put on a pious long face and parade around solemnly in black? Do you call that fasting? A fast day that I, God, would like? This is the kind of day I'm after. To break the chains of injustice. Get rid of exploitation in the workplace. Free the oppressed. Cancel debts. What I'm interested in seeing you do is sharing your food with the hungry, inviting the homeless poor into your homes, putting clothes on the shivering, ill-clad, being available to your own families. Do this and the lights will turn on and your lives will turn around at once. Your righteousness will pave your way. The God of glory will secure your passage. Then when you pray, God will answer. You'll call out for help, help and I'll say, here I am. If you get rid of unfair practices, quit blaming victims, quit gossiping about other people's sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsive reading today is from Psalm 112, found in Voices United, page 834. And Mark's going to play our response. Blessed are those who fear God, who greatly delight in God's commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Riches and plenty shall be in their house, their righteousness enduring forever. They are a light in the darkness for the upright, being gracious, compassionate, and just. It goes well with those who lend generously, who conduct their affairs with justice. For the righteous will never be shaken. They will be kept in remembrance forever. They will not live in fear of bad news. With resolute heart, they trust in God. Their heart is steady. They do not fear. In the end, they will see their enemies downfall. They distribute freely to the poor. Their righteousness enduring forever. They will hold up their heads in honor. Our second reading is from the book of Corinthians, chapter 2, from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 2, reading verses 1 to 13. 
Let us listen for the word of the Lord. You'll remember, friends, that when I first came to you to let you in on God's sheer genius, I didn't try to impress you with polished speeches and the latest philosophy. I deliberately kept it plain and simple. First Jesus and who he is, then Jesus and what he did, Jesus crucified. I was unsure of how to go about this and felt totally inadequate. I was scared to death if you want to know the truth of it. And so nothing I said could have impressed you or anyone else. But the message came through anyway. God's spirit and God's power did it, which made it clear that your life of faith is a response to God's power, not to some fancy mental or emotional footwork by me or anyone else. We, of course, have plenty of wisdom to pass on to you once you get your feet on firm spiritual ground, but it's not popular wisdom. The fashionable wisdom of high-priced experts that will be out of date in a year or so. God's wisdom is something mysterious that goes deep into the interior of his purposes. You don't find it lying around on the surface. It's not the latest message, but more like the oldest. What God determined as the way to bring out the best in us long before we ever arrived on the scene. The experts of our day haven't a clue about what this eternal plan is. If they had, they wouldn't have killed the master of the God-designed life on a cross. That's why we have this scripture text. No one's ever seen or heard anything like this never so much as imagined anything quite like it, what God has arranged for those who love him. But you've seen and heard it because God, by his spirit, has brought it all out into the open before you. The spirit, not content to flit around on the surface, dives into the depths of God and brings out what God planned all along. Whoever knows what you're thinking and planning except yourself. The same with God, except that he not only knows what he's thinking, but he lets us in on it. God offers a full report on the gifts of life and salvation that he is giving us. We don't have to rely on the world's guesses and opinions. We didn't learn this by reading books or going to school. We learned it from God, who taught us person to person, through Jesus, and we're passing it on to you in the same first-hand, personal way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you. Our gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 5, reading verses 13 to 20. Uh, let us listen for the word of the Lord, and we hear Jesus, and this is part of the Sermon on the Mount. Let me tell you why you are here. You're here because to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives by opening up to others. You'll prompt people to be open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. Don't suppose for a minute that I have come to demolish the scriptures either God's law or the prophets. I'm not here to demolish, but to complete. I'm going to put it all together, pull it all together in a vast panorama, 
God's law is more real and lasting than the stars in the sky and the ground under your feet. Long after the stars burn out and the earth wears out, God's love will still be alive and working. Trivialize even the smallest item in God's law and you will only have trivialized yourself. But take it seriously. Show the way for others and you will find other honor for in the kingdom unless you do far better than the Pharisees in the matters of right living, you won't know the first thing about entering the kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. God of light and life, open our eyes as well as our ears so that we may not only hear your word preached today, but then see your word lived out in our lives and in your world. Through Christ our Lord, the light of the world. Amen. The text is verse 13 from Matthew chapter 5, and uh, I'm using here Clarence Jordan's The Cotton Patch Gospel. Uh, you all are earth's salt. But now if you just sit there and don't salt, how will the world ever be, get salted? So you'll be so worthless that you'll be thrown out and trampled on by the rest of society. You all are the world's light. You are a city on a hill that cannot be hid. Have you ever heard of anybody turning on a light and then covering it up? Don't you fix it so that it will light up the whole room? Well then, since you are God's light, which has turned on, which he has turned on, go ahead and shine so clearly that your conduct is observed and it will plainly be the work of your spiritual father. Jesus is telling his followers to be salt and to be light. Most of us would rather be sugar than salt. You are the sugar of the earth. That sounds more interesting and more fun, I think. A spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down, they say. Life is hard. Isn't it nicer to be sugar, to make things sweeter? Uh, but Jesus says, you are salt, you are light, not your sugar but you can still be nice, but that's not what Jesus is asking. He's wanting us to be salt and light. And salt is very useful for things. In scripture, it was used uh, in ancient times. In Leviticus, priests offered salt with their grain offerings as commanded by God. In Numbers, salt, in the book of Numbers, salt is a sign of loyalty and faithfulness to the covenant. In 2 Kings, Elisha, purifies bad water by putting salt in it. Salt is an offering to God, a sign of loyalty and a means of purification. Just as salt is each of these things, so we are for the earth. You are salt. Other things for which salt is useful and cooking is important. Salt is important. I, I see the cooking shows and those chefs they have little jar jugs of salt. Uh, I've just got a little salt shaker, and if I remember, I just throw it on or that. But it's because salt, as we know, brings out the flavor of meat. Salt draws out true flavor. And just as salt draws out true flavor, so do we for the whole of creation. You are the salt of the earth. As we also know, salt perks up the food, uh, salt seasons. So we do so for the whole of creation. Salt can be a preservative. Uh, before refrigeration, as you know, salt was used uh, to preserve meat, uh, taking the moisture out and preserving it so bacteria and it would do certain things. I'm gonna have to investigate this more for my fridge. It's, uh, it's, that way I can be sure it lasts for a long time, but uh, it's a preservative. 
So do we preserve the whole of creation? You are salt of the earth. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. And what it means is that Jesus' followers are to be light. Not you will be light or I'm practicing or I'm going to be light. You are light right now. You are light. And he says, a city built on a hill uh, is not able to be hidden. We're to be seen, to be noticed, not in your face as some people go door to door uh, with the sales or with religion, but by our actions, by what we do, we are light to the people and we witness to God's reality in the world by the way we live. This is effectiveness. Jesus says we are, we are not to cover up our light, but to shine and care for the world. Uh, and uh, Jesus said, it's, you don't have a lamp and then put a basket over it. That, <laughs> it's risky, it's uh, not safe. And it destroys the effectiveness of the lamp. We're not to be hidden. Uh, and when you put a light on, you put it on a table so the whole room lights up, so the world lights up. Everyone in the house sees the light. Light helps people to see. Light also reveals things that were once hidden and to reveal you are the light of the world. And light enables us to bask in the beauty of God's creation. If it were not for light, we would not see colors. There is colors in light. Remember, I remember back in the caveman days when I think I went to school and there was a prism and you sign the prism and there's all sorts of colors in the light. Well, there's colors in the light. Jesus calls us to be light and to have the variety and beauty, not to be dull, but to be bright and lively. Light shines God's multicolored beauty in this world. You are light of the world. So Jesus says to his followers on that mountain and to us today, you are salt, you are light. That's our command for today from Jesus. And it is also as a church, we are to be salt, we are to be light as a church, as a congregation to be useful for all of creation, to make this a better world, to shine in this world. This is our challenge. And our good works and the church's good works will draw others to God. So, my friends, we're to be salt, we're to be light. Thanks be to God who loves us and challenges us. Let us, as able, affirm our faith as we join in the creed, which is on the screen or in voices 918 on the bottom. As able, I would ask you to stand. Let us affirm our faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And we are sing this next hymn to remind us that of all the light, Jesus is the light of the world. And so in Voices United, 
87, I am the light of the world. prayers of intercession and commemoration of the dead, let us pray. Tender and loving God, sustain those among us who need your healing touch. Make the sick whole. Give hope to the dying. Comfort those who mourn. Uphold all who suffer in body or mind, not only those we know and love, but also those known only to you. May all know that your peace and your joy of your supporting love and care is with them. With thanksgiving, we remember before you those we know and love and cared for who bore witness to the light, who have passed into your presence, 
grant that we may persevere in faith to which we have been called, and at the end with them behold your glory. O God, in your loving purpose, answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes. In all things for which we pray, give us the will to seek to bring them about for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. And as a church family, we have our announcements. And it's been sent out in the email, and it's been on the screen ahead of time. Uh, just to make mention, those who are having birthdays today, Aiden is having a birthday, and Michael is having a birthday. On the February the 7th, Kaylin is having a birthday. And on February the 10th, Linda and David are having birthdays. And we wish them all a happy birthday and a good celebrations. And uh, this coming week, it's I, the worship committee is meeting on Tuesday afternoon at 2 p.m. Um, and there's the Euchre party here on Friday. And next Sunday is the congregational meeting and everybody can attend and be a part of it. Uh, and that'll be after lunch next week. Uh, if anybody's interested in the pre prayer and healing ministry, information's here. Feel free to contact me. And Lottie says the Benevolent Fund is coming along, but still needing some money. Um, okay. Is there any highlights to any announcements? We now enter into our communion, the Word of God enacted. And uh, it's, it is mo in ancient times, it was always at the time of offering. If you've noticed in a Roman Catholic Mass, there's sometimes the washing of hands. That's because all the communions were originally a harvest Thanksgiving, and the minister officiating would have pumpkins and squash and all sorts of gooby things, and then he could go wash his hands, and then it was symbolized in, in, in the service. But it is our offering, and we offer our gifts. So in the name of the one who said, I am the bread of life, I invite you to come and eat. In the name of the one who said, I am the true vine, I invite you to come and drink. In the name of the one who said, love one another as I have loved you, I invite you to come to the table of our Lord. And our way of receiving is, I will serve the elders that are serving you, and then you will be served. And then the idea is, Serve, elders serve you, you uh, then go out and serve the world with your love, with your salt. And, uh, and so we begin with our offering, so we have our offertory. Grant us, God, the grace of giving. <laughs> Us pray. Receive our gifts, O God, and our lives. May they be used to show forth to the world the greatness of your love. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Christ, your perfect gift and our Savior. Amen. prepare, uh, continue to prepare as we sing, eat this bread, and also a reminder when, when communion will go flow through, receive the bread here, then receive the wine, wine here, and then 
head on your way. So it'll flow. Those who aren't able, we've got an elder to serve you in the pew so you don't have to come rushing up. And so let us sing, eat this bread. Voices United 471 as we continue to prepare. As Jesus at table with the disciples offered a prayer of thanks, so we offer a prayer of thanks. Let us pray. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to do so. We thank you, God, that you are mighty, that you create everything, this earth and the universe of which it is part, that you make us like yourself and for yourself, that you care for all that you make. Oh God, how great you are. We thank you, God, that you give yourself. You gave Jesus, your son, one like us, but unlike us, faithful to you. One who died as we die, but unlike us, accepted death, even though it meant to be broken on the cross. We thank you that you brought him to life again, that he lives now, that he will always live, exalted and triumphant. Oh God, how good you are. So it is we, that we and all your people are grateful to you. We acknowledge your greatness and goodness by saying, we thank you, God. We thank you. Everything reveals how great and good you are. We worship you. Before you, God, by what we do here, we celebrate the life and death of Jesus Christ. We declare our faith that he is alive and master of all. We witness to the hope that he will come again. Come, come Lord Jesus, Jesus, come. So it is we do what Jesus did the night he was betrayed. 
He took bread, thanked you, broke the bread, and gave it to his followers, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. He also took the cup, saying, This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. Send your Holy Spirit, God, on us and what we do, that as we break bread and drink wine, we may be united with Christ, he in us and we in him, that we who are many may be one in him. Make us strong in faith and love, that we may become truly human as Christ was truly human, as our Lord Jesus Christ offered himself to you. O oh God, we offer ourselves to you, as your people have done before, as they still do everywhere. Use us as you will, that we may die to self and live for you. Accept us, accept what we have said and done here. We have no right to ask this, but Christ was born and died for us. We ask it then in his name. Amen. And now as Jesus taught us, we pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ, poured out for you. gifts of God for the people of God. I would invite you to come forward.
us join in our post-communion prayer for the bread we have eaten, for the wine we have tasted, for the life we have received. We thank you, God. Grant that what we have done and have been given here may so put its mark upon us that it may remain always in our hearts. Grant that we may become mature Christians, that ours may be the faith which issues in action through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us prepare to go forth from this time of worship, singing Seek Ye First and Voices United 356. Or it's on the screen. Go out into the world to be salt, to be light, to bring brightness and nourishment to this wonderful world of God's as God's agents of love and care. And go forth now with the blessing and peace of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.